This is kind of the point of this video. It's something I've never seen before. And it's a Vactorer lithium iron phosphate, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour app connection. So I can connect this to my phone and monitor it. I've already put the app on. It works. It connects effortlessly. Um, but the, the trick here, or the, the neat thing, is that it's self-heating. Low temperature charging, self-heating. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this outside. It's minus 14 degrees here today. And I'm going to put this outside. And I'm going to use my infrared gun in a couple of hours. And I'll report back and see what the temperature of this self-heating mat is. I might have to introduce a charge to it at, th at that point, which is fine. I do have a small lithium 2 amp trickle charger. And we'll see how well it charges. All right, so it's in the shade, the back of my shop. I will report back in a few hours to see what that heating mat is doing. I'm in the back of my shop. This is the Volkswagen graveyard. I've got a bunch of Westphalias that I've scrapped over the years, lots of parts and a little shed full of parts that needs doors hung on it. But last night I put my new Vatterer self-heating battery outside. It got to minus 15 overnight and I just put a small load on it. What I put on was a 45 watt uh, heating blanket for a, an RV tank, a warming pad if you will. And we're just going together I'm going to turn on my infrared camera, my Topton uh, thermal imaging camera, and we're going to see if that heating element, I'm going to get this turned around here and do this all with more than one hand. So, hang on. View, a film producer, they said it'd be great and easy, but it's not that easy. So, here is my, here's a picture, here is the video of that Vatrer. I've got this small heating element, this little uh, heating pad, just an RV heating pad. You'd put this underneath your RV tanks to keep your water from freezing, your black water from freezing. So here's the, I'm trying to do this all. You can see the red, that's the case of that, the case of the battery. I'm trying to get this to focus in. There we are, we're at seven degrees. Is that where we're at? Minus two, minus 2.3, minus one. So you can see it's minus 17 to the right of that battery, or just above the battery, and only minus one. So it's warming up. Definitely warming up. You can see the just the heat signature, the, the color change. I don't know how to keep that angle from going. Of course, the death of these batteries is turning them on, trying to charge them when they're cold. But if you can keep this warm, and it's self-heating. So anyway, step one, pass the test. I'm getting close to buttoning up this project. This has been uh, the rainy day, snowstorm, too cold to work outside kind of project. This is Project Lazarus. Uh, you got to take these projects in bite-sized pieces. doesn't matter what you're trying to do, whether you're building a shed or a building or a house or building a camper van or a boat. And I've built houses, I've built a boat, I've built, I've built countless camper vans, hundreds of camper vans probably, but you got to start somewhere. And what makes the most sense to me is to start with the mechanicals of this van. Make sure this thing will start, shift, stop, drive, get the suspension tidied up make it safe, make it so it'll pass the safety inspection in the province that we live in. The next thing to do is to, to start cleaning and take an inventory of the things that will make this thing a better van. This van is a van that I, I didn't want to fall in love with and restore it, which means I don't want to spend the money and put a five-figure body job on this van. This van is not going to be worth $10,000 more with a $10,000 body job put on it. This van is going to be mechanically fresh from one end to the other with good electricals, I've got a, a good, reasonable battery to put in for the house battery. I've got the propane, all the burners working on the stove. This will not have a fridge, but it'll have provisions for a cooler. There's a space here for a porta potty, which I think, in my opinion, is more important than a fridge because you can add an external fridge pretty easily. The cupboards have all been taken out. The floor has all been scrubbed. All the metal has been scrubbed. All of this has been scrubbed and put back in. And then the next thing we do after we get that fixed up is we move into the cockpit and we make it comfortable to drive. So. I got a leather wrap to put around the steering wheel. I'm going to make sure that all the instrument cluster lights work and the heater controls are put back where they belong. And I've got a Bluetooth Kenwood stereo to put in it and some new speakers and storage pockets on the doors and a little center console. All that kind of stuff that's going to make this van better than the average $15,000 van, which is roughly what this van is going to be worth. It's got a fairly recent three window canvas. I had some scrubbing to do to get it clean, but it's in good shape. It's not rotten or soft. So. Anyway, the next step for me, before I put all the rest of this kitchen back together, is to deal with the electrics of this van. Um, some people are afraid of electrics on a van or a camper or a boat or whatever, but I don't mind a bit. You've got a, I need a couple of auxiliary power ports, one to run a fridge when you put a, an external fridge, because I, I have a, a chest style fridge, an angle fridge in our other camper, so when we use this, I'll just take it along. I want to be able to run the lights, the stereo, 
the water pump, the tank heater, all off the auxiliary battery. And that's what this battery here is about. This is a self-heating, self-protective, 100 amp hour Vatrer. This is a horrendously hard word to, for somebody whose native tongue is English, to pronounce Vatrer, V-A-T-R-E-R, Vatrer. And I'm probably not even pronouncing it right. Uh, this is uh, their 100 amp hour battery that they sent to me to try. I've got 200 watts of solar on the roof from Bouge RV. And I've got a, somewhere here, in the back of beyond, a 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller, which will end up going right up here behind me. I've already got the wires run from the solar panel. So they'll go to the input and then there'll be two batter, two wires that come out to the output, which charge this battery. And then there'll be two wires from here that go to the positive fuse panel and the ground of the van so that the load will be measured from here. We'll be able to measure how much current's going out. This has got an app that we can also control. You can measure the temperature of the battery. I put it outside today with a load on it in a small trickle charger. And I use my Topton infrared thermal imaging camera app on my phone which is kind of another very handy tool, which I didn't even realize I needed. And uh, the load I put on it was only three and a half amps. So it, was, it wasn't a tremendous amount of load, but I ended up uh, putting this out all night. So this battery was minus 15 degrees, or I think it was minus 17.2, according to the thermometer. And then open the app and then put a charger on it and a small load. And it got up to six degrees Celsius in about an hour. So, which means at that point, once it passes the, the freezing threshold 32 Fahrenheit or zero degrees uh, Celsius once it starts climbing up then it'll start to accept a charge at that point this will be really handy in this van if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time my dream trip has been to leave here and go to the Pacific Ocean and it's a uh, over 5,000 kilometers one way like 5,600 or something like that in the winter time uh, it sounds really ridiculous but which means I need to have a source of heat need to have a reliable power source and of course the mechanicals of this van have to be reliable too. So get the engine all tuned up and oil change and had the fuel system even changed, clean the injectors and whatever I can do to make this as reliable as humanly possible, I've done it. So if I have a breakdown along the way, I'll deal with it. I'll, I'll take enough tools and a, hopefully enough spare parts that I'll be able to fix what goes along the way. But to make that all work, I need to make sure that I have a system in this van that's gonna support me. I've been typically using sealed lead acid batteries deep cycle group 31s in my camper van build they're horrendously heavy they're i think they're around 80 pounds this here is not this here's in the 20 some pound range and it's probably the best bang for your buck i'll try to find a link for this battery and put it down below but if you're if you need ideally i should have two of these batteries in this van to run the diesel heater overnight i gotta find another place for that diesel tank that's another Another thing I'm, I haven't figured out yet, there's always a, a problem to solve, but but anyway, this 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 battery is gonna be the, the key that's gonna run this whole system. I'm probably gonna take one of my Blue Eddies as well for the 12 volt outlet if I wanna run my electric blanket for an extra day. Let's say I get sick or somebody gets, you know, if I get, I don't know, twist an ankle and injured and don't wanna drive that day, I can hold up somewhere in a Walmart parking lot for an extra day if I have to and without running the van i can continue to keep my heater going if i have that blue eddy or i have uh, run my electric blanket most of the times it'd have to be pretty cold for me to need to run the furnace all night long so i would run the furnace until i went to bed and then turn it off have my electric blanket on so it keeps me warm while i'm in bed and then i the remote for the furnace is going to go on the wall here and i'll be able to click it on in the morning before i have to get up and that way at least that that warms the air up in here and makes it livable. And I'm gonna have the floor, I've got lots of sound deadener I'm gonna have on the uh, on the floor. as a bit of an insulation as well. I've got a half a sheet, half an inch sheet of plywood and then some carpet. So this will be a, a comfortable little place to stay. And I wanna have this ready to sell, let's say by the long weekend in May. You know, these big projects that I take on, it's not always the project or the, or the dreaming of using the van, let's say, in this case, that is, as much fun as the planning, as the shopping for the parts, as the looking for the elusive missing shelf that fit in there, the right one that's been long gone, long gone. So luckily I have a couple of cadavers in the backyard that I can take, I can take the parts from, either duplicate or to use the parts completely. I completely disassembled this kitchen this morning 
and to repaint the rusty face plates and the grill at the bottom of the fridge door and the little grill that goes along the back of that wall, things like that, that just change the attitude of this van. It'll make this van a lot nicer. I have the new decals that go around the stove, the little controller here for the battery and the water tank. And I've got a, um, a new water level sensor and new lights were in here and grills that where the cooling air comes in. I've got some aluminum ones of those from Vanagon Life. I got all these little trinkety things. I've got a console that my friend Jim had donated to this cause that we're going to put into this. It's a center console that fits in that uh, just over the, the factory console, but it adds a couple of cup holders and a little uh, drawer and I think a 12 volt outlet in there as well. So little things like that. And you know, there's an, a couple of Amazon purchases that that thrill me. And it's, it, I don't want to say that I'm getting wound up over stuff because it's the dreaming of what the stuff can do more so than the stuff itself. I'm not into this project for a whole lot of money. Um, been building this van, as you know, for over a year now. It starts and runs. I could drive this across Canada right now. No problem as far as reliability goes. But now it's time to make it clean, presentable and pretty. So that's what we're up to. And I think the rest of our lives have to be set into those, let's call them thirds. I had a friend of mine that I actually sold my very first synchro to, Malcolm. And he was a very wise guy. I'm not, I haven't talked to him in years. I'm not even sure that he knows that I sold my shop. I've reached out to him by email a few times and haven't heard, haven't heard anything back. But Malcolm, if you're watching, reach out to me. Find me. You can find my email pretty fast, I'm sure, through this uh, YouTube channel. But he had described to me all of the trips that he's taken. And he's traveled more in a, in a Westphalia than most people ever have. Puts them in groups of thirds. So the first third is the planning of the trips and the laying the maps out on the table and the uh, doing the research of what's in this little town that we want to see. Is there a museum or a restaurant that has got rave reviews that we want to eat the kind of food that we like to eat? Or is there a fishing spot that everybody's got to try this fishing spot? And it's might not a touristy type thing. Like I would be repelled by the tourist traps, if you will. I mean, I've driven across Canada and I'm not interested in going into Banff or Lake Louise. I've been to both of those places, but that's the tourist trap place. I went to Salmon Arm. I went with my uncle. We went to fishing on a at White Lake that there were like six other boats in this whole huge lake. You know, that's the kind of stuff that jazzes me up. All of that part is the third of the planning to try to find out what you're going to do with your time. What routes are you going to take? And the third is actually the trip. The third is the, the, the journey, the taking the back roads and the scenic routes and the where we're going to spend the night tonight. And we've had some of our best nights in camper vans in a cemetery, wastewater treatment plant, um, parking lot of a church, uh, government wharf parking lot, not campgrounds. We've been to nice campgrounds too, but it's always been the spontaneous type stuff. That's the third of the enjoyment. And the, the last third of the enjoyment is looking at my photo reel on my on my camera, on my phone when I get home and remembering that and, and sharing those pictures across when my wife's working today at the food bank and what we did, did a year ago today and I share that picture and she'll remember that inside joke that we share because we were at some place and some guy was arguing with his wife or something like that and we made a joke about it. And, or sometimes you'll watch somebody through a window and you'll see them conversing back and forth and we're making up the lines for what they're saying to each other. It's hilarious. We have a good time when we travel. So we're the silly games that we play. Anyway, all that to say is we're easily entertained. But the break your trips, and not just your trips, but everything else in your life into thirds. The rule of thirds. When I built my sawmill, it was the rule of thirds. I loved the whole idea of engineering and calculating and finding the parts and all the rest of that. That was a third of it. And then the building, the actual burning the metal with wire. I don't know, miles and miles of wire when I built that sawmill. And the other third of that never stops. Every time I run that blade through a log, I'm the first guy that sees inside that log, that's ever seen inside that log. The only other person, the only one, other one that knows what's in that log is God. Only because he created that tree. And I turned that into some pretty beautiful timber. Uh, it's a, and it's a living. And it, it's, it's the final third that we seem to always put the most weight on. And I, I think we should reverse that thought process and put equal yes. on the, the first third the middle third and the final third. And that way I don't think we'll be as disappointed in our projects. So anyway, I just looked up the weight of this battery because I wasn't sure. It's 24.2 pounds. So it's about a quarter of what a lead acid battery would weigh in the same size. And uh, this is gonna be 
this will be this will this will run everything in this van for a long time. And uh, I don't know why I went off on a tangent about the thirds. It had nothing to do with batteries or maybe just the building the camper van, but it's been a, a fun, this has been a fun project and it's starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then at that point, we only start the next third. So, and then once I sell it, maybe that, that final third will be a little, a little bit diminished, but we'll, we'll turn our energy into another project. The next thing I have to do is run a bunch of wires, get the solar controller on, get this battery mounted. I've got a bracket for that in the house. I could go in and get it, but that's part of that third that I was talking about, the planning. Where am I gonna put this battery that makes the most sense? That I can still use the diesel heater I've got planned for. So anyway, I'm having a fun day. What more can I say? Thanks for watching everybody. See you on the next video.